This is the Horse Radio Network. Hey, you're listening to Adulting with Horses, the best place to be if you can't be at the barn. We are your co-hosts and equine authors, Heather Wallace and Natalie keller Reinert. As crazy horse girls, we don't take ourselves too seriously in the saddle or out. We celebrate the things that make us different. Join us as we talk about horses and pop culture and get a little weird in a fun way. Thank you for being a little weird with us. Oh my God, Natalie. So after all the technical difficulties that you had with your desk and me with my, my microphone, um, we're here. Can we, can we just talk about the microphone for a minute? Because yeah, I think we need to. I think, I think it, it needs it must to be, be addressed. Uh, <laughs> uh, you have a large uh, shadow of a dick on your chest. Phallic, phallic symbol <laughs> right between the breasticles. Um, and I'm not sure what to do about it. I don't, I think I'm going to let my freak flag fly today because I'm wearing, I'm actually so, <laughs> this is what I get. I'm wearing riding clothes. Oh, that's a riding top. It's a I color block see. riding top from Redding Oat, but it's Redding light Oat. colors. Mm-hmm. And I usually wear dark colors. Yes. So dark colors, you don't see shadows. But today you see the shadow of a microphone looking like it's a giant penis it looks like making it's, its way <laughs> towards my mouth. Okay. It looks like it's just inching its way towards your mouth. <laughs> It's the greatest. We need, wait, how do you take a screenshot on Max? I feel like we need to screenshot. Can oh, yeah. You get there's one? totally like a button that does that. Hang on, I'll take one. Do, I do, think do. We yeah, need, we'll have to share this with our. I think our we people. need people to see it. There. Did you hear that? <laughs> I heard it. Yeah, because the volume's turned up all the way. Yeah, um, that's amazing. It's, um, <laughs> it's a vibe. Uh, my husband wishes, but. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I do also, not to digress too much on my dirty bird, but I do say a lot of times working the body work with the horses, you know, I am up in areas. There was a horse yesterday that was so under muscled. He's a senior. He's definitely on his last legs. And I turned to the owner and I said, okay, I'm in his, like, I was in his groin looking for a tear because he was holding his leg up in the air. I felt his rectum. Like I could feel because usually there's muscle supporting all that. I could actually feel from the outside his huh. rectal area. I was like, you know, if people knew what I touched on a daily basis. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's especially to me, it's great because you clean up remarkably well. Thank you. I don't even try usually. Uh, yeah. And you are capable. You live a double life. I do. More than I, I did, ever yeah. did. And I and I definitely did the whole like, I'm a professional, but I ride horses in disguise. But you go the other way. You fully clean up and nobody would ever know that you can identify a horse's rectum from the outside, like touching the opposite side of its mm-hmm. groin. That's really impressive. And you have shown me how to make a horse fart just by pressing. I know. I've got some mad skills. You really, you you were the whole package. You know, just like you're I sure. only used my powers for good instead of evil. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> it's probably good that I use the powers for what I do. And I don't, you know, take my secret sauce to all the animals and just have them fart on their owners on command. <laughs> Can you imagine? Heather's farting army. <laughs> It's diabolical, you know. Mm. I I would like to say, like, when I die, I don't want to go down as the woman who could like did butt stuff with horses. Like, that's not really what like my brand. Positive should... butt stuff. Positive butt stuff. It's not sexual, okay, guys. It's for the benefit of the horse. Literally, <laughs> it's not sexual. We are only we are all in service to the horse, whatever yes. it takes. Ex- exactly. You know. I mean, this this in this case, the animal was. You know, I was trying to diagnose a tear by, you know, by feel and luckily I didn't feel anything. And I was like, oh, there's a rectum. It was purely coincidental. It was not on purpose. I just want to clarify that for all the people out there that think I'm a weirdo right now. <laughs> but they already knew. So, yeah. Yeah, that ship has sailed. It's good, though. That's why they're here. Well, I just think, you know, I, I would like to be glorified and raised on a pedestal because I am wearing riding clothes. I'm wearing riding tights. I'm wearing a riding top. I'm wearing high boot socks. 
and I have a braid in. Like this is what weird. What does this all mean? It does means this mean I you're rode. going riding. I you already, already rode. did. I rode today oh. for the first time in like a month. Oh my gosh, you're gonna be sore tomorrow. Never. I feel accomplished. I feel like I could do anything. When you ride first thing in the morning, the whole rest of your day, like, God damn, I rode this morning. That's right. It's great. Fuck I yeah. didn't. Because I rode yesterday morning hmm. and it was 99% humidity, which is a Ooh. lot of humidity. Yeah. <laughs> and I woke up this morning and I looked, at, I looked at my weather station and it said 99% humidity. And I said, you know what? Every other day is fine. <laughs> That's just too much for anybody's health. I mean, I... You know, I had the injuries, first the knee, then the arm, and then my aunt was sick. So I just got back from Houston, which, by the way, didn't die. I didn't meet Lucifer there. Mm-hmm. It was actually the same temperature as it was in New Jersey, ironically. Oh, my God. Um, so that was cool. But I got back, and it is – you want you want to – it was 70 degrees this morning with a slight breeze. Ooh. I said, fuck yeah, I'm getting on a horse. If we got a hurricane, it would be like that, and I would definitely ride. So yeah. fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> you're like the only horse owner i know who's like let's get a hurricane yeah i mean this time of year that's the only thing that really is going to cool it off before like october yeah. so let's fucking go i <laughs> <laughs> i also know more about them than most people so i have a different risk tolerance that's because, like, true weather genius armchair meteorologist all of the above um so you know i have a different risk tolerance but We have been getting rain, thank goodness. Um, A big difference from last year. The weather patterns have favored me. And I'm getting grass, and I'm getting mushrooms, (laughs) and I'm getting mud, and I'm getting moldy hay. And you know what? Fine. Just anything's better than it being 95 and dry every day (laughs) for me. Yeah. Well, then you're (laughs) at risk for fire, which is like our worst nightmare. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Florida does definitely get fire. This is not I don't live in a fire dependent landscape. Um those are more piney and I'm more in oaks, but it's it's part of the ecology. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, we're we're lucky we we move forward in this summer. We had a rough start. We had a couple of for, forest fires already. And then now we've been getting plenty of rain. So, I'm hoping we're good but yeah it's been making the footing in the arena wonderful because i only have an outdoor as you do right you you ride in your paddocks and Mm -hmm. and all that and i have an arena and they just regraded it and so there's no jumps in there so i was pretending like i was an olympic level dressage rider nice yeah we sucked we did not ribbon we did not (laughs) medal okay but we were there we showed up you showed up you got, you know, you got into the arena. That's what people really want. A lot of people say they just want to show a Rolex stadium and that's why they'll do um, like the dressage at the retired racehorse project is mm. just because it's in the Rolex stadium. So just that feeling of going into that space is accomplishment enough. <laughs> I mean, I don't, that seems really intimidating to me, but um, you know, that's cool. That's, that, that's a cool vibe. I mm-hmm. think uh, I was invited to go down there for the retired racehorse project in October, um, but I I just can't make it work, you know. And you you were invited as well, yep. I believe. Yeah, yeah, so. and, and um, yeah, October is when my anniversary is. Yeah, and it's my birthday. Right, I know. Yeah, and I'm not share. going to Maryland Five Star with you. I apologize. I'm just saying that in front of God and everyone um, here on this podcast that I would love to go to Maryland Five Star with you. But it ain't happening this year. <laughs> That's okay. It's actually my daughter's birthday too. Yeah. So I feel like if I went, I would be a really bad mom. Yeah, we might have to go in like five years. Yeah, when, when it's on like yeah. yeah. Yeah, the kids at college and you can be like, Oh, I'll just give her a little texty text. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, Mom, mom is in Maryland this weekend. Well, I'm already missing her first day of high school because I'm gonna be in Iceland. Oh, I know. <sighs> and in my defense, because I feel terrible. She is fine with it right now. But I feel terrible because when I when we had initially planned the dates for this it was like a year and a half ago, the school, the way it was set up was she was going to be starting school after I got back, like the next day. They moved up the dates. Yeah. Um, and I don't know why. But again, my bad. And so, yeah, so I'm going to miss the first day, but only the first day because I get there the same day. So, like, I'll see her at the end of the day. 
that's when it's going to matter because in the morning it's just like the rush to get there. I missed Calvin's first day of um I think second grade and I w- I I had and he went home with somebody else and he was like it's fine it's fine it's fine and then she texted me and she was like he seems a little down I was like oh my god I'm dying so it's the after school and they want to talk to somebody or yeah, just tell get us that about hug it kind of thing mm. yeah. yeah I never kind of stopped feeling bad about that <laughs> yeah sure he's well forgotten. you're still thinking about it. he's in college so that's what I do you know I just mull over the bad things I've done it's uh. great and you are yeah and i'm sure you've done plenty of bad things i people i think I people assume i do a lot of bad things i'm actually very very good for the most part i just am very vocal about what i'm thinking so <laughs> <laughs> i don't always put it into action but i think about it yeah um and so speaking of putting thoughts into action i thought this episode has been a re- very much requested mm-hmm. by our group our clubhouse members and um, it's something that I think is going to be fun and interesting to talk about, which is like horse trailering, horse trailers and towing, really. Yes. So I, you know, you and I have different experience levels with this. I have a trailer. Mm-hmm. I probably tow it once or twice a year at this point. But I taught myself mm-hmm. how to drive it. And, and I will, we'll go into why. But have you ever had a trailer? Yes several many okay did you do go snack or bumper pull i have i can haul both okay i've owned bumper pulls um but i have done a great deal of trailering actually uh around florida uh up the eastern seaboard uh in new york city (laughs) that is what i would not want to do it sucks trailering is wild to me because it feels like so i'm going to say something that some people are going to be like ew natalie why would you say that but trailering feels like the manliest thing that horse women do like we do a lot of like things that would have traditionally been a male role Mm -hmm. rightly or wrongly mechanical things cars trucks etc do appeal generally more to men than to women that mm-hmm. is why most gearheads, dorkiest title, are <laughs> generally men. I don't know why men have an obsession with engines. I think it's really nerdy and I think they should get over it. But says the girl who's obsessed with horses. As much as because <laughs> horses are cool, cars are dumb. <laughs> as much as I hate cars, hate them, hate them, hate them, I enjoy a good, robust truck and trailer discussion. I enjoy hauling horses. I think it makes me feel extremely professional. And powerful, maybe. Very powerful. I think a woman with a horse fan behind her is just an extremely powerful figure. Very sexy. So uh yeah, I like I like trailer, man. I think it's cool. I feel like I so I always said to myself, and I do, you know, timid writer, hello. Um <laughs> I'm a lot of talk. I think people have realized. <clears throat> and I always said when I had my own horse, like, well, I'll never drive a trailer because I'll just like granny it the whole time. Mm-hmm. Now, here's something people might not know about me is I, well, you know, Terror. I drive like a race car driver. <laughs> horrified, horrified. Not just, not like a NASCAR driver either. Like, like a Monaco driver. Like, <laughs> yeah, like Formula <laughs> fucking one. <laughs> yeah, they're okay. twisted turns. Weaving out. I'm drifting so the people behind me can't merge into my lane, you know, like all that kind of shit. <laughs> so when I get into, you know, I'm hauling my kids with me or I have a horse behind me, like my thought is like, do the opposite of what you normally do, like protect the babies, right? And so I go in full on granny mode. So mm-hmm. I always said I wouldn't trailer. And then I got. Ferris and we were riding the trails that were attached to our property and we were having the best time. Like we were so fit. We had the best time. And when I left the property and I didn't have trail access, I was like, I need a fucking trailer. Like that's like, I need to be able to do this. And so one of my old barn mates was selling hers. It maybe had three rides on it and she just was too scared to drive it. So I bought it and my trainer taught me how to drive it on the spot. And I drove it and I've driven it, you know, maybe 10 times. I don't have a truck. Yeah. 
So there are some like tips and tricks for trailering, but, and there's some things that I looked for because I have a large SUV and not a truck. Um, but I also don't want to overdo my transmission. Right. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm actually pretty good at driving a trailer. I definitely don't go over 65 miles an hour. Um, backing it up, I can actually do. It takes me a few minutes, but I can do it. And I'm so fucking proud of myself whenever I do it. Mm-hmm. But if I have an audience, like it's taken forever. <laughs> I need I, to be silent. I can back up the same way I can parallel park really well as long as I don't think about it too hard. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's, it's then you know, you're turning the wheel left. Everything is fine. And then if you just, if I allow myself for one second to go, wait, am I turning the wheel right? <laughs> and it just, <laughs> my head explodes. I have to straighten out the wheel. I have to sit and take a few breaths. So yeah. the key is just to not overthink anything. Just feel it, right? And look in your mirrors. Mm. Yeah. For I the think longest it's... time, I stopped looking and I stopped using a rear view mirror at all. Because when I learned to, to drive a trailer, it, it's frightening. The first few times you glance in your rear view mirror and you see a trailer right behind you. Oh my God, what's behind? Oh, it's my horse trailer, especially a gooseneck. Uh and so I just stopped looking and I didn't use my rear view mirror for a really long time. Oh my God. <laughs> I just used the side mirrors because I had just trained myself. It's terror behind you. <laughs> well, and I like to do, I like to open my windows on the sides, especially if I'm mm-hmm. backing up. I like, so, so, and we'll maybe go into a little bit more detail. So I have a Dodge Durango. It's a V6. I do not recommend driving a trailer with a V6. Okay. That was always something that I was fighting for the Hemi and my, my husband vetoed it and I want to kick him the balls. Um, <laughs> again, I let him. So, but I didn't have the trailer then. So, but it, my, I have a shadow light trailer, which is a three horse slant um, stock combo. So it's super light. Yeah. Like it's very, very light and it's narrow. So it's the same width as my Durango. Mm-hmm. So I can see the back tires on the trailer, which is awesome. So I have really good visibility. But yeah, it's it's an interesting thing. So I'll I'll look open the window and look out when I'm backing up just to see which way the tires of the trailer are going if I feel a little off. Yeah, th- I agree. Opening the windows. If I w- were to haul with my current truck, I would have to put down the windows and because the, it has this old tint on it that's so dark, I can barely see the mirrors anyway. And what's really funny is right now, the the driver's side window doesn't want to go down. <laughs> uh, so I would have to open the truck door and back up. But I've done that before. That would be fine. <laughs> I'm, um, I've been on both sides of the like luxury and poverty coin, and I'm equally comfortable in both. So I would just open the door and, and glance out over my shoulder that way. Be perfectly fine. <laughs> well, when was the last time you drove a trailer? Um, in New York. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been a while, but I don't really think it's something you, you don't forget. forget that. Like, I um I drive. What I like about a trailer is when I'm driving it, I I just like take control of the road. The road is mine. The speed limit is mine to determine. The turns are mine to take as wide as I choose. If I want every lane because of bumps, I will take them. I don't granny so much as very formidable mama bear the road. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, these are my horses and the rest of you can go straight to hell if you don't like it. If this road is bumpy and I want to go 40 and a 60, die mad about it. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's in New Jersey. There, there's a driving vibe. Okay, I think everyone can admit <laughs> that driving in New Jersey is basically an amusement park ride. I mean, it's it's the kind I don't get on. Yeah. So, <laughs> so for me, you know, I'm so hyper aware. Again, I'm an overthinker. I'm an anxious person by in general. Um, it's I, I'm surprised. Like the first time I ever drove the trailer, it was I I practiced like in the woods like in a in a like a park system yeah so there wasn't a lot of traffic I practiced backing in I practiced all that but the, and I was fine but I legit didn't sleep the night before I hauled a horse for the first time mm-hmm. because New Jersey's crazy and I would rather take the local routes like the roads with red lights yeah. and and multiple lanes than to take a highway because people swerve in out mm-hmm. they cut everybody off and. I'm just super careful about braking, you know, because I'm yep. obviously hyper aware of the horses behind me. But if I do that and take the side roads, I'm much more confident. 
Um, yeah, I agree. I, I really prefer taking the side roads. I know a lot of people will try to avoid red lights. And for me, in Florida, the country roads will have one or two red lights in every town. Not really a huge deal to me compared to our interstate system, which is overloaded with people who don't know where they are or where they're going. Yeah, your interstate is scary. It is. And, you know, a a big, a sizable proportion of that is tourists. Uh, they, they're listening. And it's worse now, I think, because they listen to their GPS. But they don't know when the GPS suddenly says, you know, in 100 yards or whatever, exit right. And they're in the far left lane. They're going to exit right. And if that involves taking you out, well, they have to get to you know, Granny's Barbecue or Disney World or wherever they're going that somebody told them they couldn't miss and their GPS said get off and they're doing it and they assume everyone will break for them. And on yeah, 95... And it's not possible too with the trailer. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, you can't slam on your brakes. You can't, no, you can't, you can't. You just can't. And so I, whenever, I don't know, I think we should take a quiz of all the people in the clubhouse because whenever I see someone else driving a horse trailer, I'll either be behind them like six car lengths just to make sure no one comes up behind the horse mm -hmm. or I might, if there's like a lot going on, I might get in front of them and give them space and then just like tap my brakes if I see people slowing or like I try to help, you know, yeah. like you I know, have done that. Yeah, I think. But I'll tell you, people who haul for a living, whoa. They just go. They don't. Mm -hmm. They usually have the air ride trailers, you know. Now, listen, we are not professionals. Correct. We have, um, you know, I see some of these endurance riders. They're they, you know, usually they start off with a stock uh, trailer, and then eventually you might see they're up with like a like a three to four horse uh, gooseneck. You know, it depends with living quarters and things like that. You see it all, but. You can tell the people who are so proficient and are just like, I give zero fucks. My horses are going to get there and you're not. I had uh, I had a trainer as a teenager who she had been driving a horse trailer. I think she was like 13 because she had like – she came from a big ranch in Kansas essentially. And uh, we, we were down near D.C. There's a horse park really close to Washington, D.C. with an event. And we were going to school cross country there. And she was making a turn, like a double turn lane, and somebody else was cutting really close to her to the point where she couldn't see them anymore. And she just, she literally laughed and she said, if you hear crunchy metal, it's that car that was up my ass. And she didn't care. She was like, I'm bigger. And she knew exactly what she had in her truck and her trailer. And you know, her confidence was unmatched. Now, she, her confidence sometimes could do strange things like once we did take out a gate completely oh no we didn't know until we were pulling out onto the road and she was like did you feel that like tug when i was pulling out and i turned around and i'm like um yeah the wheel well was caught on a gate and the gate is now dead and she just like hits the gas <laughs> and we're gone oh my god well we're and we're definitely gonna we're gonna do another episode where we're talking about like our fun stories i think that is is reminded me of something pretty like, bad. yeah like she felt that and she was like it's fine oh well she had she had so much experience if you feel a tug when you're turning stop stop, stop. <laughs> yeah just just don't well and yeah. it's and, and so i i i think if i were i want a truck i do i want a truck but I'm nowhere near having that because I have kids and dogs and all that. So I need the space. Right. So, you know, when you're looking for a horse trailer, I think it's really important to note what truck you have or what car because it is highly possible to to trailer like a very lightweight bumper pool like I have with a Durango or something like that. But you have to make sure you limit, you know, what what you gosh, weight you put in there. Like yeah. I can do Ferris or Delight easy. If I put both in, it strains the transmission a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. and I have to use make sure I use the electric brake a little. Um, so I never, ever trailer more than, say, like 40 minutes away. And I try to keep it to areas where there's not a lot of hills because I don't have a truck. Yeah, you can... I mean, it only it takes about five minutes on Facebook to see a horrifying trailer disaster that mm -hmm. was caused by not enough truck. Yep. 
And something that can happen with even the biggest truck is that you don't understand the terrain that you're hauling on. And like for me in Florida, I don't deal with a lot of hills. But uh, I have on occasion been sent places with like mountains that I didn't necessarily expect. And, you know, found something I found, I, you know, had a very reliable truck and trailer experience up until that point. And then it was behaving in different ways because I was dealing with grades, uh, both up and down that I had never driven on before. Um, so when people are doing like a minimum viable towing vehicle kind of situation, you have to keep in mind that life could send you someplace that isn't what you're used to. Right? Like you wouldn't just blindly take a route with your truck. No, I couldn't. Or your SUV, right? You would have to know exactly where you were going, what the terrain would be like, because your SUV wouldn't handle hauling a horse up a mountainside. Exactly. And if, yeah, it wouldn't handle hauling up. And then at the end of the day, too, it's more of a brake situation. Where it is if I don't have brake enough situation. brakes because I'm coming downhill and I have the trailer behind me putting that extra push on me. Um, and I've heard, you know, horror stories about that where people who knew what they were doing. Uh, and there are some tips for that. I do. I can go into manual and I can downshift and, up, you know, an upshift and things like that into another gear, which I think you highly need. Like if you're going to haul a trailer, you need an electric brake. Um, and you need to be able to shift into manual if you need to. Yeah. I've never done that. I didn't know about shifting into lower gears until, um, like two years ago when I went to Colorado and yeah, that's scary out there, Colorado. Yeah. Cause we were staying, you know, we we're staying in a town that was a mile up as it was. And it had a couple of ridiculously like steep, the hills were almost like folds in the earth like it didn't make any sense that people lived on these on these city streets and you went straight down and like it seemed like the cars front and back would somehow balance themselves in the cup of the hill before you could go up again i found them very disturbing i was terrified when i drove in colorado yeah and so and what the speed limits were like 25 so i had to learn how to downshift to get up the hill because i couldn't coast down it Oh, I did not like doing that. I just, the action of like changing the gear. <laughs> I'm an automatic driver. Again. Well, I am too. I, am, <laughs> I I tend to be, but you know, you burn out your brakes if you don't do that. Yeah. And that is scary because they're, and especially in Colorado, since we're talking about it, they have these offshoots for semis and mm-hmm. things like that where they can cool their brakes because if their brakes go, you're all fucked. I have lost my brakes going down a hill with a horse trailer behind me. Have you really? Oh mm-hmm. my god. That's yep. scary. Yep. Yep. That's scary. Yeah, when you put your foot down and nothing happens, you go, "Um, I don't know what's happening right now, but there's a car in front of me." Yeah. That wasn't there a second ago. Yeah, really scary. Uh <laughs> in that case, um that was the question of not knowing how to drive in the mountains. Pure and simple. Yeah. If and I it, had- it does take skill. Mhm. Yeah. Like there's a very different vibe between like I am confident driving in the wilds of New Jersey, right? And by wilds, I mean like suburbia where it's just people shooting out from every direction. Like I'm confident about that. I'm confident about back roads. I'm, I can even do a highway. I'm not confident about mountains. Mm -hmm. And when we were moving up to the property in Vermont, Jason says, well, why don't we just put the sofas and stuff in your trailer? And I said, not with my SUV. I'm not. I'm not hauling a trailer with my Durango in Vermont, even though I'm on the southwestern portion of it, I know I would shred my truck Mm -hmm. and we would all die. So (laughs) no, thank you. But I would never give up my trailer. I think it's the bee's knees. It's really like so easy for a beginner to use and take care of. Um, And you have to get it. This is something I think people really need to know is, and a lot of people don't do this, get it checked out like once a year. Just make yeah. sure that there's no rusting in the axles. Make sure there's, there's, uh, you know, the tongue weight's good. There's no rust in that. Like, make sure everything's well oiled. Your tires are good. Don't kick your tires either. I know. Um, oh, you have a m- tire kicking story, don't you? <laughs> was well, you? no, no, no. Because oh. I was just, uh, horses in the morning, they do this, like, they repost one this one episode about trailer safety. And I, I listen to it every year because I'm like, oh, I did that. 
you know, and it's like, don't kick the tires because they have such high PSI that if you kick the tire and it explodes, your foot's coming off. Yeah. You told me that I think at an equine affair and I just sort of stepped backwards. Like, oh, dear God. <laughs> yeah. So, cause I did that. I, I was, I was kicking the tires to see if there was air in them. I said, oh shit. Okay. I won't be doing that anymore. I've told my husband before we end up with another trailer. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, and, and where do you take your trailer? annually to have it service for people that maybe don't necessarily do that. So um, what I did was I asked a couple of people who have done it and I got their recommendations. There's a couple of mechanics that specialize in trailers and tow vehicles. Um, but what I did actually was I went on the Facebook group, like like our central New Jersey Facebook group, and there were people who come to you. Mm. Because I, again, I have 100,000 miles on my Durango. I do not need to push that too far. Yeah. Um, especially because I just had some transmission issues. So I'm not trying to haul my trailer more than I have to as of now, because I don't have, you know, the rideable horses. It's kind of just sitting there waiting um, to be used. Like my trainer used it a couple of weeks ago, things like that. So mm -hmm. he's a mechanic. I have him check it out before every, every time we take it off property, but you can have someone come in and do an inspection at your ranch, at your farm. Uh, you just need to find them. That's a really good plan to just have somebody come out. And it's so easy with Facebook groups to get everybody's opinion. Yeah. And especially if it's been sitting for a while. You know, mm -hmm. when I first got my trailer, it had been sitting in the mud for a good three years. And it was only five years old. And again, it hadn't been trailered much. So we weren't really sure what we were working with and the axles and, and things like that. And so if you're not sure if you should drive it, just have someone come to you. I guarantee it's going to be worth it. Yeah. Yeah, that's not a risk you want to take. That is for sure. I've never had um, anything go wrong to the point where I was like, oh, if only I had. But you have moments where you're like, oh, that light definitely should be working or that oh my brakes gosh. definitely don't feel like they're operating. I'm going to go really <laughs> slow and limp home, that kind of thing. I definitely have stories about that. Oh, lights. Oh, yeah, me too. And run-ins with Nassau County cops and yeah, the whole <laughs> The whole thing. Yeah. I have I, a dream trailer. Oh, what is your dream trailer? I want a Brenda up. Oh, yeah. We used to have one on the property. Did you? Oh, yeah. 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 They're, they're tiny. Mm -hmm. But I only, you know, have one small horse and that's what I, how I'd like to, it to stay. Um, well, I have Manny too, but I could wedge him into anything. It's not a big deal. They can, he could just hang out underneath Ben. They're, they're, um, they're hard to find now. Yeah. Every now and then I see one for sale for like 10 grand. And I think yeah. that's fair. That's a, that's a fair price because, um, they're fiberglass, right? So they're, they're very light, very light. And, uh, I am, uh, always in the market for something that's going to save me gas money. <laughs> well, and so, and so light is good, but you also have to consider sometimes too light is not great because if it is too light for your horses and for your truck or whatever, it, it will sway. Yeah. And so that's something that people, especially because the Brenda ups are narrow, you have to consider. Well, Brenda ups are designed to be hauled by vehicles, not by large trucks. Because right. in the, you know, like the UK where they're common, people haul with their like Volvos because yes. people don't have trucks like they do here. And I know that the way truck, the truck market has changed into this thing where you have to, you have to spend at least $70,000 to get some sort of like gruesome monster vehicle. I don't mm -hmm. know what happened to just like, oh, it's an F-250. It's a normal vehicle that you would drive. Like there's something going on where they all have to be Jacked enormous up. and yeah, and look psychotic and like not a fan of the current truck market. And I'm not going to have to that get kind in of one of money. those. What? <laughs> Can you imagine me trying to get in one of those? Oh my God, for real. Well, I use the running board on my F-150 and it's a 2005 or something. It might be older than that. I don't know. Uh, I just don't like them. I just, I just, everything about them gives me the ick. Well, and because they're made for, I mean, again, strong women or men with tiny dicks. Mm -hmm. So that's it. Exactly. That's it. Exactly. I would be happier if I kept my F-150 for like buying hay and stuff. It's it's a farm truck. It's not hauling anything. Um, even it has a brake box on it, but I don't know if it works. It's that's not what it's for. I would be happier if I could trade my small car for an SUV that mm -hmm. gets decent gas mileage compared to a truck. That could be my my town car 
and I could haul a very light trailer with it. Yeah. I mean, that's what I do. Yeah. Because my expectations are not high. If I were going to or show, I would take back roads. I would encounter very few other people. It would not be a problem. <laughs> no, and I will say, um, and even so my mechanic is my my trainer's husband and he was hauling my trailer and he, with his um Ford Expedition and the Ford Expedition is on a truck chassis but mm-hmm. it's obviously a little bit it's on a pickup it's it's a little different and uh he goes oh my god it was so easy to look, like it was so easy to haul it was light it was it was maneuverable i said yeah it's like it's it's a trailer for dummies like mm-hmm. and even though it's a three horse i can see the back of it because it's the slant so, yeah. you know, you could fit them all pretty easily. Um, and we only used the two. So we took one slide out anyway. So it's like extra big for delight in the front. But yeah, it's perfect. But for me long term, especially if I'm going to be having my own property, I'm going to want a more robust vehicle if I'm hauling up and down going to like Green Mountain Horse Association or to the trailheads and things right. like that. So you really have to consider when you're buying a trailer – where where are you located? Like, what are the roads like? What's the terrain like? What are you using it for? Um, and as much as I want to truck, I think I'll probably be getting like a Tahoe next. Mm-hmm. So I'll go up in engine strength and size. And then I'll feel a lot more comfortable hauling the trailer, you know, longer distances. Yeah. Yeah. I and mean, if you are someplace that's interstate heavy or the only way for you to get to shows or trails or events is to take the interstate, you need a more robust vehicle and trailer, both, that can handle those speeds. Because you can't go 50 on the interstate. It's not safe. Don't do it. No. Please. No, and, and <laughs> I've, even in the Durango, like I'll hit 50 and then you start to feel a little sway. And so then you have to kind of back off the gas and slow really? down. Yeah, you have to feel it and mm-hmm. see kind of what your sweet spot is and then yeah. just stay there. Um, Whereas I've hauled a very long three-horse Mm-hmm. With um, uh, a, you know, like a full size dually truck, uh, and it's like, yeah, I can go eighty five miles an hour on the interstate. Right. That's not because you have the dually. Yeah, you feel literally nothing. You just go. So, I mean, that's that's a reality if you are in an interstate heavy area. Like this was, I used to go to Southwest Florida a lot, and there's really, there's not. A lot of ways around like I-75 if you're going to like Foxley Farm, which is a big showgrounds down in Southwest Florida. You kind of are on this very terrifying interstate. It is what it is. And you need the equipment to handle that kind of the traffic, the stopping, the going 80, the stopping again. (laughs) Oh my God. There's nothing that I hate more than the sudden slowdowns Mm -hmm. where you have to put your hazards on to let people know that you're slowing down. Such a sick feeling. Oh, I hate that Mm -hmm. because I know that I will always have an exit strategy, but the people behind me, I don't need up my ass. Yeah. That's the hardest thing for me, even in teaching Calvin how to safely drive on the interstate, is please don't wait until the last minute to slow down. If you see brake lights ahead, tap your brake to tell the people behind you you see mm-hmm. something because they just they just get right up behind you. And when you have horses back there, ugh, heart and yeah. throat, disgusting. Well, and that's the other thing is, you know, put a, a, a hazard sign, you know, something that is, especially if you're going to be hauling at night or in low light, yes. put something on the back of your trailer to let them see it because um, I have a scary story. And we're going to do a whole episode of that. But the reason I say that is because one time my my electric did come out. Mm-hmm. And so I was driving with no brake lights on my trailer at all. Yeah. And, and it's, that's not uncommon. That happens no, a lot. It's scary. Mm-hmm. It's really, really scary. And all I and I and there was no way it was rush hour. There was no way I could pull over to the side of the road and fix it without, you know, potentially getting run over by a vehicle myself. Yes. And so I just had to to kind of put on my flashing lights and hope, you know, hand out the window and hope someone saw us. Um, It's it's really scary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And bad things do happen. But it's just the same with horses. If you come prepared, if you choose the right trailer for your vehicle and vice versa. Right. Right. Um, I mean, I think I've always been told that the goosenecks, you know, have less sway and they're more stable and things like that. Yeah, I've never driven one. I love how light my my bumper pool is. I don't think I'll ever need more than that. But you know who knows. Um, so you just gotta kind of pick what you 
I think goosenecks need. are good for uh, – well, they're better. I mean, in most yeah. ways, goosenecks are better. But I do think they're really good if you're definitely super anxious about the idea of trailering because – or if you don't – it doesn't come to you naturally. Like you don't go, oh, I see how this is following me, that kind of thing. Mm. A gooseneck is an extension of your vehicle in a lot of ways. It, it just – it follows six feet closer because it's six feet further up. Right. <laughs> yeah. Which makes it more stable. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And the only thing it, it can make tight turning can become like extremely nerve wracking because you can bang into your gooseneck. Um, if you, you could jackknife, you could jackknife and, uh, you, people can do, put these like extensions on, the trailer ball, I've seen this once or twice um, to make the gooseneck sort of farther away from the back of the truck. If it's like a short bed, please don't do that. That sounds like it's kind of a not safe situation. Um, Yeah, I have. I'm just going to tell this horror story because it's short. I have witnessed the thing come loose and swing forward so that the gooseneck is suddenly right behind your rear view and then you make a turn and the front of it just knocks out your back window as you make the turn and there's glass all over the back seat and the children in the back seat i've seen this firsthand oh my god <laughs> one of those things that happened to me that doesn't feel like it happened to me because it was so horrifying that <laughs> it's just like were you driving no i was in the passenger seat going oh. i think this is bad i think this is bad and then it coming through I was with somebody who was very devil may care is the best way to describe this man. Um, <laughs> wow. I mean, I I followed him through a lot of bad choices before I said, I can't work for you anymore. <laughs> I got to go. <laughs> this was a man who, who once got an alligator hunting license for fun and then brought an alligator into his kitchen. <laughs> Just it's like, you're supposed to kill it. <laughs> <laughs> he brought it into the I have no words for that Florida man. Just Florida man. He was very much a Florida man. Nice guy. Super nice guy. Yeah. It sounds like <laughs> common sense wasn't really something that he came into he town on. No common sense. <laughs> he was just happy go lucky. And happy go lucky when somebody's in like their fifties and they have four children is weird. Like it makes yeah. less and less sense the older a person gets to be like they just don't match their personality at all. But oh he God. liked to acquire horses. He liked to he liked doing stuff with his kids. He was he was super nice and just made some bad choices. And I said, maybe this is dangerous. <laughs> yeah, I think you know one thing. I think is something that I am really proud of myself for doing was I got my trainer to she because she had even said to me she said I don't know if your Durango can haul a trailer even if it's light. So I said, okay, can you come with me and test it? Like, I want you to drive it. I want you to tell me what you feel because you know, you know what I mean? So like, yeah, someone I trust, someone I know has been driving. She's dyslexic, which is awesome because for her backing up is literally makes so much sense, mm -hmm. you know, because backing up, it's, you know, you turn the wheel opposite of the way you want to go. Oh. So she's like, this is great. So she's <sighs> showing me what to do. She like just loves living in reverse. She literally, literally <laughs> she can, she can, she can parallel park a trailer. It's fucking crazy. That's cool. I, yeah. So she... She started hauling the trailer. She pulls it out of the mud. Her parking brake was on. So she was like, whoops. Okay. Never mind. We're fine. <laughs> that was my fault, though. Um, so we're driving it around. And then she pulls over, like, just one arms, or, you know, and she's like, okay, you're driving now. I'm like, what? So she checks the ball. She checks everything. And she puts me in. She gives me a driving lesson in this trailer before I purchase it to see if it's something I feel comfortable driving. She had me park it. She had – it was it was actually – I highly recommend doing that if if – the seller is willing. I think that is the best piece of advice I have heard because like the things like the the RPMs or the sound of your engine revving for the first time that loudly, that can be really startling. And so for somebody to say, no, no, that's normal or whoops, <laughs> that's a little too much. You you really want somebody who has that ear and is already and that feel and they they know exactly what your truck should sound like when it's working because you've only you've never heard your truck work. No, you know, so, um, you know, and for situations like this is how we pull out of, um, you know, dirt versus this is how we pull up concrete. Yeah. A full driving lesson in the towing vehicle is a great, great piece of advice. Yeah. I don't think a lot of people get great. that. Mm -hmm. I've, I fully recommend, I mean, even, but you know, obviously you want to bring someone who knows how to drive a trailer. Don't bring your best friend. Right. No, you need a joy ride. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't even, you know, wouldn't even bring me like, I don't, I haven't hauled in a while. So I might be like, ooh, I don't like the sound your truck's making. That's kind of my thing. 
is not liking sounds that cars make. It's kind of my well, thing. you know, and so that's actually a funny point. So I was I was going to take Shauna Koresh was in New Jersey a couple years ago when Delight was over at the Sanctuary um, at Sage Hill Farm, and my horsemanship trainer there. We were like, okay, I said I'm going to pay for you to go to this positive reinforcement clinic. Bring your then like four year old Mustang, and let's bring Delight and. We're, we'll take my Durango because her her truck broke. So I was like, we'll take my Durango. We'll haul both. And but I said I I would like you to drive because she's driven a lot and and it was great. But she had never driven an SUV in a trailer mm-hmm. before. And this is the first time I had two large horses because her Mustang is not um tall or any, but she is built like a brick shit house. Mm-hmm. And Delight is no spring chicken. Like he is a beast. <laughs> so the tongue pressure on the front of the the front and the back of the trailer was quite a lot. So we came out of the driveway and like we hit, you know, the curb went boop and we got the metal and I was, so immediately we were like, mm, we're yeah. not feeling super sure about this. And then we st- got onto the highway and there was a lot more sway than she was used to. Uh, and which for me, it's a little bit normal to have a little bit of movement just because it's an SUV. It's a different feel because the chassis is shorter. Right. Um, so you just have to be aware of what speed you can sit in. Right. And uh, finally, we were like, you know what? It's not worth it. So we ended up turning around because we were so nervous about it. There was apparently a very large hill that Mm -hmm. we were supposed to be driving over. And we just called it before because if you get that little red flag in your gut and say, "Mm, I'm not sure if something is right. It's probably best because they're your babies yep. on the back. Yeah, and nothing. I didn't want to risk them. Mm-hmm. So, you know, nothing was wrong with the trailer. I had it checked out. Everything was fine. It was just probably too, 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 too heavy, the horses. So I need like one heavy, one light as opposed to two heavy horses for yeah. the Durango. But the trailer was fine. Well, and when you talk about pressure, you know, and when you see the hood start to rise a little bit in front of you, that's destroying your suspension. Yeah, I never had that luckily, or I would never would have come out. But so it was like the trailer that was kind of dipping in the back more because mm-hmm. she was in the back of the trailer. And she's, yeah. again, a beast. Um, so the, the truck itself was okay. But it was definitely working a lot harder. Yeah. And I just said, you know what, this doesn't feel right. We both made the call to just turn around and go home. And I feel to this day like it was the right move to me. It sounds like it to me. Yeah. Because if you hit the curb leaving, Mm-hmm. You don't know what other obstacles are in your path, right? A pothole. Mm-hmm. And um, things can come undone. Things can break. Like things aren't supposed to wrap against asphalt and concrete, and it can cause trouble down the road. Let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, New Jersey doesn't exactly have. Um, yeah, you know, we have a lot of potholes. Mm-hmm. So, and the farm lane could have, right? The farm lane could have had really deep potholes. We Absolutely. Drive down, drive down some of the, the farm lanes in Ocala after a couple of weeks of thunderstorms. Yep. And I, I like to take my little car places, you know, to save gas. And sometimes I'm like, I uh, can't believe I went to the center of the earth in that last puddle. It didn't, I had no idea it was six feet deep. <laughs> you like sat in it before one tire poked its head out. You know? <laughs> I did it recently going to a friend's house. I was like, you didn't tell me most of the road was underwater. <laughs> She's like, well, it was firm. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> You're like, well, I get my little car. No, I think it's important. I think it's important. Something that just occurred to me that is super important, um, especially if you are driving through any like smaller towns, railroad towns like you have up north. Oh, yeah. Know the height of your trailer. Know it precisely <laughs> so that you don't end up in a small town near Radnor Hunt Pony Club backing up because the railroad bridge really, really looks too tight for your rig. And you're just not sure. <laughs> That's a good call. That yeah. Yeah. Better to go around. Better to go around. Better we just could have avoided that, just not made that turn. <laughs> and the thing of it was was the height was almost precisely it was, you know, just slightly above the height of the trailer. But it was one of those railroad bridges that's in a dip, you know, mm. and just like I was saying about the road in Colorado, where it looked like my car would balance for a moment perfectly level instead of going all the way down. This could have done that with the trailer because of the length of it. And so we couldn't we needed like a foot more clearance to feel comfortable going under this bridge. It was very uncomfortable. 
and it made like, a lot of people very angry. It's making me sweat. <laughs> you have like, those kinds of bridges up there. <laughs> we do. And we have trucks that get stuck in them regularly because mm-hmm. they don't read the height signs and they try to skip the main road yep. and they take the back road. But And I can't tell you how many times it's blocked like the street because it's done that. Mm-hmm. And yes, I've seen horse trailers go underneath it. <laughs> I, uh, I was riding in Central Park one day. And um, Central Park has, you know, two cut throughs called transverses um, to let traffic go from the east to the west side. And they're very low. They're not for commercial traffic. And we were riding over it. We heard this ungodly crash right below us. Oh, my God. Somebody had taken a box truck and just peeled the top right off. <laughs> like a sardine can. Yes. Oh my God. Yeah, you don't want to do that with horses in it. I know. Yeah. No, our horses were like, um, because they, they're pretty bomb proof. You ride them in Central yeah. Park every day. They were like looking over the bridge like, oh, like, that's that's, coming. that's not right. <laughs> Probably like stupid out of town. Or- <laughs> yeah. Don't let that be you. Know your height. Know what you're comfortable with. That's a good tip. That's a good tip. Um, Also, too, something to remember for people who are maybe new to trailering is you will expend more gas when you're hauling. Oh, my God. So be prepared to stop more often. And if you're in the middle of nowhere and you see a gas station, stop there. Just stop in, Phil. Just do it. Mm -hmm. Don't wait. Yeah. That is for sure. What about... What kind of little comfort options do you offer your horse? I have on occasion, depending on the trailer, um, if it doesn't have like a big manger in the way, I have hung a bucket very high, filled it halfway with water, topped it with hay so it doesn't slosh, and mm-hmm. offered them water on trail ride trailer rides, which I learned from somebody from out west and I thought was a really nice trick. Not if your horse paws, obviously. But no, that's a good hint. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't usually provide water because we're taking short hauls yeah. because of the Durango. Um, so, but I do always provide hay, always. Yes. And I think, you know, some people may have opinions about that because it is the slant combo. So it does have open slats on the side. And so, you know, there is like a risk if someone were to throw a cigarette or something, but the odds of that are pretty low that's a minuscule it doesn't even the physics of it doesn't even line up i don't want to hear anything else about that cigarette story it's ridiculous <laughs> um and so so yeah so for the overall comfort well for my comfort i'll tell you i put in a wireless camera and oh, i, I love that. yeah so what i do is i have a wireless camera and i can put like a gps type situation it's just you know where i normally would put my cell phone i put it up so i can tag the bluetooth to my phone and I can check on my horses without Wi-Fi. That's great. Yeah. So I do that just to give me peace of mind, especially if I'm in heavy traffic or, you know, again, my brake lights are out. <laughs> um, you know, so I'm just making sure that they're okay. So for me, that's my peace of mind. It's something super easy to do. You can literally bring like a ring camera or a nest or something like that and set it up because you don't need to have electric in your trailer to be able to make that work. Could you... Could you stick one of those on the back of your trailer and make it a backup camera? You absolutely could, I imagine. Huh. How about that? That's a great idea, actually. So, like, that would be, you know, I see a lot of people trying to worry about, you know, these big, big cameras, like the big barn camera, 360 views. I don't have electric in my truck, so I use a wireless Bluetooth camera, and it works phenomenally. I just charge it up before I get in. I love that idea. I'm definitely going to do that if when it comes up. Yeah, no, it's great. Um, And so for overall comfort, what I did was we took out, we had a three horse. Uh, The previous owner took out one of the the slats. Mm -hmm. So the first area in the front is quite large. So it can fit like my large thoroughbred or warm blood. And boy, he takes it up. Um, So I make sure to put like the really thick, robust shavings on the ground. Mm -hmm. And then I usually, well, if I'm hauling to like a trail ride, I actually have him bridled without the bit in his mouth. Oh. Um, so I have like a snap on bit, mm-hmm. you know, and reins. So I just have the bridle on like a halter and then I put like a breakaway halter over it and snap him in there so he can move around a little bit and have, but. Um, That's actually how the NYPD hauls too. Yeah, it makes sense. And mm-hmm. I, I leave him tacked up because he's a monster to tack up. Oh. Um, and and when you see grass, he's like a nightmare. <laughs> so um, I learned from the last trail ride that we can tack him up, but we have to bridle him first because otherwise we're never getting his head up enough <laughs> to do it. <laughs> yeah. Ben is not dissimilar. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> we took him uh when we took him to the state park a couple of weeks ago um it was it was like he was like knee deep grass and i didn't have to tie him to tack him up <laughs> we were in this like hundred acre field was not concerned he was not leaving my side there was grass <laughs> Yeah, see, delay would be the opposite. He'd be like, that grass over there looks great. I'll see you later, bitches. And, <laughs> you know, he'll try to walk away. So um, in endurance, they have these biothane halter bridle combos. And all you do is you snap on the bit and then you can snap on the reins when yeah. you get there. So it's perfect. It's safe. Um, it's just kind of like a second halter. Um, yeah, no, that that sounds like a good. I I do like to have as much done as possible when I trailer, so yeah. I do groom beforehand. Yes, um, and then just you know, if you need them to look good, usually if you've sprayed them with something, then you can just knock off the dust with a brush, mm -hmm. and you know, comb straw out of the tail if you have to, and then yeah, throw the saddle on. I'm not big. I don't love trailering with tack. That just feels like a like with saddle. That just feels like there are things to catch on things. And yeah. <laughs> I think well, I would probably use a saddle cover if I did that. So the that's not a bad idea. Yeah. yeah, I have. Um, I was using a Western saddle, and I I didn't feel super confident about it. But I asked my trainer, and and she was like, "This is how I would do it," and she showed me. And because he has so much room, like he's not there's nothing for him to connect with. Yeah. Um, especially it was only ten minutes down the road, so it was very unlikely that I would be <laughs> getting stuck in things. But if I were an English saddle, I'd probably take off the stirrups mm -hmm. first. And then just put them on when we got there. Because and that's how cowboys, cowboys, yeah, that's how they do it. Yeah, I don't know if you have a lot of them in New Jersey, but here in Florida, we, we have many cowboys. Yeah. And um, they usually, we see them going up and down the road. They'll put throw two or three horses in a stock trailer mm -hmm. untied with their tack on. Yep. And they just, they live probably because they're not thoroughbreds for the most part. <laughs> the only thing I don't like about that, and one thing I've learned from watching like driving behind these horses and seeing them is um horses work have to work really hard to maintain their balance around yes. turns and it's given me a new appreciation for dividers and making so sure your horse has something them. to lean on mm -hmm. yeah yeah because when the, you put them in those cattle trailers that don't have any they're just they're just wide with bars on either. the horses aren't going to lean on those bars for one thing um they work so hard you know straddling these turns shifting and you can see their legs straining like oh i don't want to do that to my horse so i used to use a i used to have two times i had the same trailer which had like one front um slant stall and then the back was like a big almost triangular shape and it was great for hauling broodmares and foals like if i needed to breed a mare and the foal had to come along because it was more than like an hour away um but i I kind of made a decision to stop using like the back portion if I had one horse because I just wanted them to have the the security of those walls to lean on so they don't arrive at you know wherever we're going exhausted from handling turns and stuff. Just like, yeah, and especially awful if you're watch. doing the red lights as well too, because every mm -hmm. time you slow down, you speed up. You know, it it matters. They rock well and. A friend of mine does a lot of rescue, and so they'll pull animals from auction, and they will put them loose in the stock trailer a lot of times. Uh, and it's funny. They've noted that they actually prefer to stand facing back. Mm -hmm. I see that a lot. Yeah. And it's for whatever reason, it's better for their balance. It's so probably their hindquarters are stronger, right? So they catch them on the break. They can lean into that. They can lean into the break. Like, it makes sense to me. And they probably take a couple steps forward whenever the truck goes forward again. Yeah, you know, the only thing the you back. want to look out for is if they pool together in the back of the trailer, it can cause that sway because they're all in one area as <laughs> yeah. spread out. So, you know, I some not something I would probably do myself, but I don't know if I'll ever be confident hauling more than like an hour or two away, um, even with a truck, like just because knowing Ferris and his fears and, you know, like I'd probably invest in an air ride when we move up to Vermont mm -hmm. and then just to, like take them locally, you know, but for the long haul trips, I'd probably invest in like an air ride trailer for them so that like, yeah. they can be professionally hauled up there. Um, I, I, again, I know my skills. I'm still a baby beginner and, uh, you know, it's your animals. So when in doubt, I'm always on, I take the more careful route. I would agree with that. I wouldn't, I've drove my horse. Well, my parents drove my horse to Maryland when I was a teenager, when we moved to Maryland. And, um, 
that was it was a straight through drive. We stopped at rest areas, took the horse out, walked him, gave him some grass, checked his wraps, put him back in. This is back when <laughs> wrapping legs was normal. <laughs> <laughs> now we're like, you will overheat and die. <laughs> um, and he traveled great. He traveled great. It was I don't know twenty hours, the poor thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, now. And when we moved back to Florida, even we put him on somebody else's trailer. We we had a professional do it because it's just they know what they're doing. You don't have to worry about the interstates. And there's a lot of times there's somebody in the back if you go with mm-hmm. one of these big racehorse shippers. And yes, I have been that person in the back. You were the person in the back. Yep. <laughs> I would do that. Yeah. Fun. You know, the thing you bring a lawn chair and you set it in the middle because it's, you know, it's head to head with an aisle in the middle. The way that you nap is you take a lead shank and you loop it around the bar on like that you would grab hold of to pull the door open. And then you wrap the lead shank around your shoulder. Like a little seatbelt. Exactly. And that way you don't go flying if the trailer stops or turns. Well, that's, uh, yeah, because you don't have anything to lean against. <laughs> no. And if you get to, some of the horses bite. So, right? so if you get too close to the horse, it's my you hate, get bitch. <laughs> well, it was funny when we were, and, and then we'll have to end it, but uh, yeah. we were going up to Vermont for hits last summer. And one of the young horses, he saw, it's so funny. He's, you know, he's used to showing and he's used to trailing. They were taking a big air ride trailer um trailer ride and the owners were in a truck behind so they ended up catching up like through the small town and he turned around and he did did a double take and he's like i know you it was very funny because they were calling his name and stuff he was like wait i'm confused i thought you were selling me so (laughs) i'm gonna tell you my my favorite trailering moment of all time okay my trailering win okay yes i was in uh my I, i i rode at aqueduct um but when the racing season is at belmont Naira would trailer horses between Aqueduct, which is in one part of Queens, and Belmont, which is just outside of Queens. It's like not far, but you go, you're going through city tr- city streets to do it. So I'm in the back of this trailer, um, standing next to my horse, and the horse cut. We stop at a traffic light. We stop next to a city bus, <laughs> and my horse leans her head forward to look through the you know the window. And it's the big, you know, if you imagine a big semi trailer for horses, you've seen those on the interstate, you know, it's got, it's the great big window that is half a door and she leans to look out and we are six inches from the woman sitting on the bus, just looking forward. And then the woman slowly turns her head, (laughs) sees my beautiful filly looking at her with bright eyes and pricked ears. Like they were nose to nose, essentially. (laughs) And that woman jumped so hard. You'd have thought a ghost had jumped out. She jumped so hard. And then the light turned. And on we both went. And we went faster than the bus. So we left her behind. (laughs) All I'm thinking while I'm laughing at this too. But all I'm thinking is like, what if your horse touched the bus and then like got hurt? Like that's all well, you could. Thinking. So you could. Uh, the horses can't get more than like the tip of their nostril to the window. Oh, okay, okay. It was just that okay. she could look all the way. She's leaning forward. Okay. And so she can see fully. She's got her, the profile of her face fully in this window, looking oh. out. We would Oops. never allow our horses to put our heads out. We're not insane. No, and I think that is a good note. Actually, before is yeah. is don't don't open your windows all the way. Don't, don't. let your horses things. They're flying debris. Mm-hmm. There's things that they can absolutely get like there are definitely stories of horses being killed by semi-trailers coming up next to them Mm -hmm. these stories exist do not let your horses put their heads out the window you wouldn't let your kid do it your horse is 10 times dumber than the dumbest kid don't let them do it oh my god i see people do it with dogs and every time i'm just like this is how i see dogs in the emergency room also i don't want to see your feet hanging out of your while we're just talking about just keep, (laughs) keep all your body parts inside the vehicle all right we live in a society. In. Yeah. <laughs> Pretend to have manners. I love it. Well, I do think that that's, a, a, that's an awesome story. I I, um, I think my only trailering win would be the fact that after years of telling everybody I would never drive a trailer, I actually do and can reverse. Yes. So that's – I win. Boom. Mic drop. Hey, you know what? Every time 
a woman reverses a trailer successfully, she deserves the right to stand up and crow and carry on. And that's a win. And I guess men too, but we don't really care what they do. No, we don't care about them. There's Mm -mm. no energy here. It's all, hey, Barbie. Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Reversing a trailer well is always a win. Reversing a trailer kind of shitty, but getting the job done, also a win. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it takes you 15 minutes. You did it. Mm -hmm. You did it. You are better than 99% of the population in that moment. That's right. Yep. That's right. Mm Mm-hmm. Hey, Weird Horse Girls, Heather here. Wanted to let you know about something very exciting. Natalie and I are rolling out a Patreon page for our listeners. That's right. So this won't be the same old content that's on all the players. Oh, no. What we're going to be doing is offering three major things to you. One, Patreon members will be able to ask us questions, and we're going to answer them on the air. We're also going to be doing a monthly bitch session where we're going to be talking about a topic completely unfiltered and full of opinions. And three, any bonus episodes that we publish will be given to you exclusively early before it's launched on major players. So join our Patreon and can't wait to see what you guys think.